Today I'm going to turn this sketch into a real life dress using this beautiful brocade and this satin as well as the netting. I'm starting the process by creating my pattern. I've drawn some style lines on my dress form that I'm going to use as the general guideline. The next step is to cut the fabrics out. It's important to be really precise when you're working with fabrics like this so that I can make sure I get a great fit. I can now begin assembling the bodice. It's important when you're stitching that you press your seams nice, flat, and beautiful when you're finished. This gives you a very professional look. The sleeves will be gathered at the wrist to give a great bishop sleeve feel. After gathering the wrist, I like to give it a little press to make it easy to stitch. Now we can work on sewing the cuffs on. This is a really fun part of the process because you get to have that nice contrast at the wrist. Now that the bodice is finished, I can work on pleating and stitching the skirt on. After we stitch the skirt on, the final dress is ready to reveal. I spent the last three days working on my version of Alice's dress from Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. For my version, I only wanted to use stretch tool netting because I wanted lots of texture and a beautiful sheer dress. The sleeves and skirt of the dress will be filled with a netting applique that I'm going to create by cutting hundreds of these tool netting strips and then gathering them together on the sewing machine. I'm going to stitch these onto the tool netting fabric for the sleeve in continuous rows to make a beautiful texture. Then I'll gather it and stitch it on. After cutting 20 yards of tool netting and spending two days gathering these guys, I can finally start to applique them on. I'm stitching these miniature ruffles onto the skirt in a gradient pattern, so it'll be like a nice ombre effect. And then I'm going to stitch the skirt closed. The last step is to make a cornflower blue satin slip dress that will look beautiful under the netting outer layer. What do you guys think of my couture inspired Alice in Wonderland dress? I decided to make one of my favorite wedding dresses in all of cinematic history, Carrie's wedding dress from Sex and the City. I began the process by making my pattern using some style lines that I drew on my mannequin. When I was patterning out this bust cup, it was super important for me to mimic the cat eye shape that the Vivian Westwood bodice had. I knew this gown was going to be super heavy, so I added a boning to the inside lining of the dress. The last step is to stitch the outside and the linings together. The skirt is comprised of two separate layers. I've chosen to use an ivory satin that's super buttery rather than a taffeta like Carrie's dress because the one I wanted was like $60 a yard and I figured since this is my rendition this could work. After sewing and serging the bubble hem to the skirt lining, I can then begin with the crinoline process. It's so important that when you're making a giant skirt like this you think of it like a sculpture. You have to build a great foundation. I can now begin working on the top portion of the skirt which will be crafted from the same champagne satin that the bodice was created from. The last step will be to sew both skirts and all linings to the bodice. I also thought it could be a fun touch to do a version of Carrie's headpiece that she wore on her wedding day. This dress took four full days of sewing, 50 yards of fabric, and a lot of patience, but I'm so grateful that I took this challenge on because I think it turned out so beautiful.